Welcome to First Christian Church. This is our Good Friday service. Hear this as our call to worship. Let us remember that God is with us now. There is no place where God is not. Wherever we go, there God is. Now and always, God encompasses us all. And he looks upon us with mercy, and he's ready to hear us when we call. Therefore, let us be in prayer. O oh, merciful God, willing to help, willing to comfort us, we pray for all the folks that are in distress. We ask that you cheer the sick. We ask that you help the doctors and the nurses, our world and national and state and local leaders. Guide them, guard them. Those that are exposed to this danger that is around us, give them peace, give them comfort, give them healing. We ask also for peace and comfort to our aged, the underserved in our communities, the oppressed, those who feel such great hopelessness around. And also in silence, dear Lord, we hold to you the names of our friends and our relatives who truly need your help, your loving care, your arms wrapped around them. Hear these names, dear Lord. We ask that you dry our tears. Let us seek, let us find your light, and may that light lead us to a greater understanding of you and your love. And may our hearts remain faithful to you always. We raise this prayer to the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, thy will be, be done. done. On, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine? 
slapped him in the face because he thought he was being rude to Annas. When they got nowhere for there, and the crowd is starting to get larger and larger, they send Jesus then to Caiaphas, who happens to be the high priest, who happens to be the son-in-law of Annas also. Now, they are there, the soldiers and the guards that are around him start to beat Jesus. And their people are coming up and they're lying, telling stories about Jesus, saying things that he never said or never did. But Jesus stands and he takes it all. Peter is down in the courtyard. Jesus is up on a, um, on, on a, uh, a patio, if you will. And that's where he's being questioned. Peter is warming himself around the fire. Someone walks up to Peter and says, you're with that man up there. And he says, no, not me. Not me. He goes back into the crowd and later he comes back up and someone else says, you were with that man. And he said, no, not me. Not me. And then one of the young ladies came up and said, I saw you with that man, Jesus. And Peter said, I don't know him. And just then, just then, a rooster crowed. You see, Jesus had told Peter that he would deny him three times before the rooster crowed. But to me, one of the most frightening images in the whole Bible, as far as I'm concerned, is when Peter said, I don't know him, the rooster crows, he looks up at Jesus, and Luke says, Jesus turned and looked directly back at Peter, as if to say, I told you. That just frightens me. Would I be able to not deny? Would I deny or not? Caiaphas' guards started to mock him. They beat him even more. They blindfolded him. And then they would hit him in the face or poke him in the stomach and say, who hit you? Prophesy. See, they were making sport of Jesus. Then they finally asked him, are you the son of God? And Jesus very plainly looked at Caiaphas square in the eye and said, yes, I am. I am the son of God. Well, they decided right then that he needed to crucify, but you see, the Jewish people could not they could condemn someone to death, but the Romans had to do the murder. So they took him to Pilate to be crucified. Now, Pilate, after interviewing him, realized that it was trumped up charges. And so he said, he's, he's, he's an honest man. There's nothing wrong here. So I'm going to go and have him beaten, and then I'll bring him back and turn him loose. And that really angered the crowd, but they beat Jesus. And they used all kinds of contraptions on him. They, they had a, like a, a cat of nine tails that had actual pieces of glass and pieces of steel embedded in leather straps and it tore his skin. They brought him back finally and Pilate was even shocked when they saw how beaten he was. But he said, now I release him. And they demanded someone to be released, but they wanted a sinner. They wanted a murderer by the name of Barabbas to be released and to have Jesus be crucified. You see, God's plan all along was for Jesus to die for your sins and mine. Nothing could stop this. So they let Barabbas go and they took Jesus out to be crucified. It is now Friday, the third hour of the morning, time for the crucifixion. It was the third hour when they crucified him.
Jesus now endures the most cruel and humiliating death, a punishment reserved for the most despicable criminals. He accepted that there was no other way to complete his purpose, and in his agony, he called out to God. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Now Friday, the sixth hour of the morning, the hour of darkness. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads. The rulers even sneered at him. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. I thirst. The soldiers came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. They divided up his clothes by casting lots and placed a sign above his head which read, This is the king of the Jews. cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Around the ninth hour, 3 p.m., Jesus called out in a loud voice. He was committing his spirit into the Father's hands before breathing his last. He did not slip away on the cross, but he filled his lungs with air, and he declared, It is finished. It was no coincidence that at 3 p.m. on a Friday, worshipers had one last chance to offer 
a sin offering at the temple before the Sabbath. At the ninth hour, the shofar blew, and the Lamb of God died. Oh.